It was at this moment that he knew he fucked up. Hey guys, and welcome back. So today we're going to be watching Buffy the Vampire Slayer, Season 5, Episode 10. And I have my makeup on, I'm wearing a brightly colored shirt, we're manifesting Joy surviving her little surgery. Like, just good vibes all over here. Like, I am not going to cry, you're not gonna see this mascara, this eyeshadow, go down my face, make me look like a crazy person. None of that is gonna happen because Joyce is going to live. I willed it, I want it, I won't accept anything else. I'll live in denial for the rest of my life if I have to, but Joyce is surviving this. You know, they threw Dawn into the show where they were like, oh, she's been here all this time. Well, now if they dare kill Joyce, I'm gonna go the opposite and be like, well, she's still on the show, guys. Like, can you guys not see her? She's literally right there. I will gaslight you guys back so hard that Joyce is alive. Like, she's not dead and she will never be dead. She'll outlive Buffy. And yes, I know, I have a little skeleton on my shirt, but we're ignoring that part. We're focusing on the yellow here, okay? Yellow is for sunshine, so jot that down and accept it. Accept the fact that Joyce is alive and fine and well. But anyway, this episode is titled Into the Woods, which I kind of love. Again, it gives me Red Riding Hood vibes. I don't know, I already guessed Peter Pan for Shadow and I was sorely mistaken. What a fun episode, guys, right? Like, very whimsical, very Peter Pan like, for sure. So, I'm scared to, you know, predict a fairy tale story, but I mean, Into the Woods is a literal musical about fairy tale characters, which I'm not sure when it first came out, like on stage. So, I, I don't know, it could be a reference to that, or this could be before the musical was ever written. So, it could be something completely different. I guess we'll see. But I'm hoping for some fairy tale vibes, some Red Riding Hood stuff. Joy is being completely alive, like she went into the woods and then she came out of the woods, she's absolutely Taylor Swift. Oh yeah, now I'm saying out of the woods, like that's an actual thing, right? Like once you're finally out of the woods, meaning I think they have used that term for people with illnesses as well, like, oh, you're finally out of the woods? Yeah, I, I think they say that like after surgery or something, like when someone's in the ICU and they're like, okay, it seems like they're out of the woods now, they're gonna be fine, blah blah blah, so why are we in the woods? I need Joyce to get out of there. Joyce, honey, get a map. Look at the moss on the trees. That's where North is, which is not true. You know what's actually true about that? Like, if you shake a little ant and then you drop them on the floor, they go North. I tried it. It seemed to work. Like, maybe it was just the one ant I tried it on, but it worked. Yes, I know. I'm rambling. Let me ramble because I don't want to hit play. Why would I want to hit play? I think Joyce is going to fucking die and I don't want to watch it. I, I don't want to watch it, so... How about this of me watching this episode, I just talk for like 50 minutes and then that's the episode. Like, let me tell you what I think will happen in this episode. Let me reenact some of the scenes like with me as all the other characters and let that be the episode. Like maybe I'll just do that for the rest of the show and then it can be a happy ending. Like I'll make sure every character is happy and healthy. Like how about that? How about that? I'm such a nice person. I'm going to make sure that everybody lives. Yes. I am going slowly crazy watching this show. Yay me. Um, but yeah, so the previous episode, Joyce went into surgery. She also found out about Dawn. She had a little speech with Buffy, which very much so felt like a you're never gonna see me again speech. So love that for us. So yeah, absolutely dreading going into this episode, but I think I'm gonna have to. So yeah, let's do that. Let's, let's just hit play. Yay, let's go. Oh, cool. Back at the hospital. Just waiting on that little surgery Joyce is having. Just me. Who's that? Sorry. Oh. Can I get you anything? Yeah. Thank you. Make it all better. I can't stand this. What's taking so long? I don't know. They're cutting into her brain. <laughs> Is it the doctor? Ah! No, no, please, 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 don't do this. Don't do this. God, fuck this music. Is she dead? Just say it. I can take it. Don't you dare fucking cut to the intro. Bitch, I told you not to fucking do it. Why did you do it? Ugh. I don't know what this means. Does this mean she's alive or dead? Like, what would it mean if they cut to the intro right then and there? Maybe she's alive? I feel like they would have told her that she's dead and then cut to the intro. Or not? Or would we want to see her reaction to it for longer? <sighs> I could still go either way. Okay, your mom's in recovery. What happened? Is she oh, she's still right? alive? Well, what it happened? is possible to visualize the tumor completely, which means I was able okay. to get all of it. So, barring complications and recovery, your mother's going to be fine. No way. Are you sure? Don't fucking do this to me. Don't fucking lie to me. The procedure, a complete success. <laughs> no way. She's actually alive. 
If they kill her at the end of the episode after she's been fine this whole time, so <laughs> like, then I'm gonna be so upset. Believe me, it's my plan. Oh, ow. Ow. Sorry. Sorry. Don't break his poor back. And then Muffin would chase me around the house yelling, I am the slayer, I'm going to get you. Oh. That's disturbing. You're emotionally scarred and will end up badly. No, it was great. I mean, you can give me real money. That would be different. And after we teach her how to gamble, <laughs> maybe we can all get drunk. <laughs> I don't think the bar would serve her, but we could bring something in. Strawberry schnapps taste just like real ice cream. Anya. Oh, my God. I'm only sleeping over here so Buffy and Riley can blink. <laughs> no, no, that's, it. that's not <laughs> That's not it at all. They just. I can't believe how relaxed I feel. It's like all the tensions just left my body. Oh. Already? So happy. Never even cried. No, I cried. Oh, yeah, she cried multiple I cried times. Hard. I didn't think I was going to be able to stop. Oh. Riley, don't make this about yourself that she didn't cry in front of you. Like, Jesus fucking Christ, this man. Mom's out of the woods. <gasps> and I'm here with you. She said out of the woods. That's all that matters. What's into the woods then? Shows love to do this when they're like, oh, this character is alive and well. And then they die at the end of the episode. Like, just like this. Like, fucking hate it here. Like, I thought I could, like, breathe and relax. But I don't think I can. I think there's still actual danger for Joyce to die. Someone else. Is it Spike? Watching them have sex. Oh, Spike. That's so incredibly creepy. You can tell he spent a lot of time with Angel. Oh god, Spike, you need to hide. Like, this is gonna be so creepy. Ooh, is Riley going back to the bar to, like, have a little suck session with a vampire? Action mom. French maid mom. I must be getting better because you're making fun of me. <laughs> well, you know. Got a lot of time to make up for. Oh, I love them so much. Please be fine. And I'm sure he'll come over later looking for a little Bible study. A Bible study? Well, good. I mean, just as long as the two of you are spending some quality time with the Lord. We are. <laughs> Absolutely. What do we got? The lease. Oh, he's back to working with the government. He's definitely a guy we want on the team. Let's bring him on board. Okay. Uh, might take a little convincing. Why? Yeah, I don't think he will. What's he got here in Sunnydale that's so special? Oh, it's Buffy. Riley? A spy! <laughs> Jesus Christ! That's... As usual, I'm here to help you, and I... You naked under there? Get out. <laughs> no, I'm serious. I mean, not about the naked part, I mean... Get out, or I will drop you out head first. Just say what you want to say. I want to show you something. It's my what? penis. You need to see this. It's very big, don't worry. You'll like it. You want to get there in time. You don't have time to put clothes on, it's fine. You can come naked. Like I give a bloody damn. <sighs> His face, Spike. You can't go up there. I think so he can. Keep it down. People are trying to have a nice time here. Relax, stop yelling. You, Spike, go around that disgusting rag that's hanging from the ceiling. Harder. Harder! Yay, this is, this is so fucking bad. Buffy! Yes. We only came here because we care about you, friend. Spike! You help. Yeah, I could see that from the massive ass smirk on your face. It's like... Oh, we care about you, by the way. I thought you should know. Yeah, maybe run. Because she might kill the messenger. Okay, no. <gasps> the Jesus Christ, guys. We're going down to terminate their operation. Want you to join us. Is he going to? Is he actually leaving? Midnight. Tomorrow. Decision's yours. Okay. Interesting, because he is a main character, but... His relationship with Buffy is kind of on its last legs, so I could definitely see him leave. Make fun of the ex-demon. <laughs> I can just hear you in private. I just like that Anya. She's newly human and strangely literal. No one says that. If it wasn't for me, Giles would be a terrified old man staring at a quarterly tax statement and wetting himself. I say, that's an exaggeration. Anya, thank you for making time in your busy life to come in here and get in the way of mine. Anya. Play nice. What's going on with her? It looked like they were paying vampires to bite them. 
Now I know what to get for the person who has everything. Who is <laughs> They get off on the rush. And the danger. The hazards of the underworld can become addictive to. I haven't seen it since my Ripper days. I, I had no idea it was going on in. It's the Ripper days. Oh, it is. If we're going into a nest, maybe we should come up with a strategy. Wait for Riley. Back me up or not. I'm going. Oh, Buffy. Okay, that's arson. I mean, I know it's an ugly ass building, but maybe don't light it on fire because there must be other buildings nearby where people could be living. Or you could get a fireman killed. Don't kill the messenger. <gasps> Why the hell not? Wait, did he kill him? Or did he miss? Ow! Bloody hell! Oh, he missed. Oh, God! Plastic wood grain. Looks real, doesn't it? What? Oh my god. Stay away from her. We'll do this for real next time. Not the face laugh. That's so humiliating. <laughs> Dude, why are you laughing? I'm afraid I'm hot for your honey. Because you are. Well, yeah. But that's not your problem. He admitted it. You actually think you got a shot with her? No, I don't. The fella's got to try, though. Oh. Gotta do what he can. Why do I want Spike to be happy? <laughs> Sometimes I envy you so much, it chokes me. Oh, Spike. Like you have to be that close to her and not have her. To be all alone, even when you're holding her. This is an interesting conversation. I wanted to even the score after you let Dracula bite you. I did not let Dracula. I know. On some level, I know that. I wanted to know why Dracula and Angel have so much power over you. You so don't get it. No, he really doesn't. Hey, gee, Buffy's so mysterious. I think I'll go out and almost die. I think I'll go and let some other... This isn't your fault. I think the fact that it was a woman vampire as well is making her angry. They made me feel something, Buffy. Something I didn't even know I was missing until... I can't. I, Jesus I can't Christ! Tell me about your whores. Tell me what on earth they were giving you that I can't. It was beyond passion. It was they a wanted hunger. to devour me, all of me. Even if it was fleeting, they made me feel like they had such hunger for me. Um, I guess Buffy doesn't give that to you. I'm sorry. You know, I'm sorry that I couldn't take care of you when I thought that my mother was dying. It's about me taking care of you. You can't handle the fact that I'm stronger than you. It's hard sometimes, yeah. This is the package. And if it's so deficient that you need to get your kicks elsewhere, and we really have a problem. Yeah, I think you really, really do. You expect me to get over it now or you're gone? I don't, Buffy, that's not no, what I No, I have heard enough. I will not take the blame for this. I'm not asking you to. Let go of me. For what? You'll hit me? I'm serious, Buffy, hit me. Why? Hit me. For what? Does he think that's passion? It's like, oh, if she doesn't hit me, if she's not an abusive girlfriend, then she doesn't even love me. I'm leaving tonight. Good riddance, bitch. See you never. I'm sorry, Buffy. I'm sorry you're hurting. I'm not running, and you're not shutting me down. Oh, God, guys. This is really the worst moment for you because she is very pissed. You're not gonna make it through the night. I mean, yeah, there's a lot of you, and there's just one of her, but again, she's very emotional at the moment, so she will absolutely destroy you all. She's so cool. And you're still going for it? <laughs> Is that the one? <gasps> yep, that's the Riley girlfriend one. She's gonna let her go? <gasps> or is she just gonna like throw it like a javelin? <laughs> that was so fucking rude. Like actually so rude. So I kinda loved it. I'm serious. So am I. <gasps> Something's up. Like I love person. him. He's not gonna let her push him away. What I can't figure out is how you never saw it coming. What? Who told you? He ran around behind my back and almost got himself killed. You gonna let him go? It's not my decision to make. Oh God, please let him go. Please don't go get him. I think you mean convenient. I think he took it for granted that he was gonna show up when you wanted him to and take off when you didn't. Look who's talking. Look who has Anya following him around like a lovesick puppy. Is she more than a convenience? Because that would kind of be a surprise. If you don't want to hear what I have to say, you shut down, Buffy. 
And you've been treating Riley like the rebound guy. I mean, he kind of is, though. And think about what you're about to lose. Ooh. No, she's gonna go get him, isn't she? God damn it. Run. I'm annoyed about the outcome, but I absolutely adore their friendship. Like, Xander is just such a homie. She's coming, don't worry. Yeah, I can have your epic kiss. Ooh, so dramatic. Will she make it? Oh. Of course she made it. Oh. Oh. Is she actually not going to make it? What? Where is she? I thought she was already here. Oh, I guess she'll make it in the nick of time. Like, we have to make it so dramatic. Oh, okay, yeah, there she is. Oh, they were gone. Is he actually leaving? No way. Is he gonna turn around? Well, now he can't turn around. She actually missed him. No. No way they're actually leaving? Is there no, like, last minute turn around? What? Okay, I kind of didn't expect it. I hoped for it, but I didn't expect it. I'm in love with you. Powerfully, painfully in love. Oh. I get excited every time I'm about to see you. Oh, my poor little heart. You make me feel like I've never felt before in my life. Like a man. I just thought you might want to know. But yeah, I think she wanted to know. I'm sorry, sweetie. I do feel bad for you. She really cannot catch a break. Not a single break. The whole mob situation and now Riley leaving. Can we let Buffy be happy? Like, just for once. Oh. Uh, oh who's that? Well done. Alright, what an episode. So Riley left. Is it for good? I mean, he is part of the title sequence, but we have seen you know, Oz leave before as well, like during the middle of the season. So I guess it's a possibility that he's gone, gone. What? Could he come back? I, I don't know. Look, I'm not gonna pretend I'm not happy about this, okay? Like, I'm sorry. Riley was getting on my last nerves. Of course, like the whole situation between the two of them isn't just Riley's fault. Like, I'm not saying that, you know, Riley was the only one who did something wrong in their relationship or whatever. But also, I love Buffy. Like, Buffy is my home girl. We've been following her for five seasons now. Like, obviously, I'm going to be biased towards her and I'm going to be on her side instead of Riley's. But I can also admit that both of them did something wrong in their relationship. So, yeah, it was just a whole messy situation. And I don't even know if they could have fixed it. Like, if Buffy had actually caught up to Riley and she could have talked to him and begged him to stay. And he probably would have stayed. Like, the face he made when I thought he saw Buffy run up was very much so the man who would have said, yes, I'm here, I'm staying, if it was actually Buffy. But I don't know if it would have been good. Like, I don't know if they could have worked it out, like, worked out their issues. Because I think Riley would always feel a little inferior to Buffy. He would always feel a little insecure that Buffy is so strong. And not just, like, physically, but emotionally as well. Like, she's very self-reliant. And she deals with a lot of her problems on her own. Like she doesn't need to rely on someone. And I think Riley is really just wants to be that protector. Like he wants to be someone who is completely needed. Like when you're going through something, he just wants to be there for you, wants to protect you and shield you. But Buffy is more so the kind of person who is just doing that for herself. I guess one of the reasons why I definitely like sympathize more with Buffy in that situation because I am also the type of person who just likes to sometimes go through things on my own. Like I don't always want someone to be there for me when I want to cry or when I'm like sad or upset. Like sometimes I just want to like be on my own and deal with those emotions myself. Like I don't need someone to like cuddle me at that moment. So I definitely get Buffy and that's why... I understand her more and why I'm more on her side as well because I would be doing something similar in that situation as well and I would kind of hate if my partner made it about themselves like if they were like oh so you don't need me like why would you just do that on your own blah 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 and be like okay but like this is not about you this is about like me and what I needed and what I needed was to be alone so that's kind of something that kind of annoyed me about Riley where he just made all of that about himself but I also like the things Xander was saying to Buffy about like her not being fully in that relationship and also 
how Riley is a rebound guy because I never really thought about it like that, but it's very much so true. Like we can't count Parker as a rebound guy because Parker also fucked Buffy over really hard. So she went from this like huge whirlwind of a romance that she had with Angel. Like that was her first boyfriend, her first actual relationship, her first sexual experience. Like all of those emotions and feelings were wrapped up in Angel. And of course it ended so badly. And the fact that it also just ended because they couldn't physically be together. I think that's also just something that's like so hard to let go because it's not like you guys weren't compatible or someone did something bad in the relationship. It was really just like a curse that keeps them apart because we saw what would happen if they could actually be together. If Angel was a human, Buffy was so head over heels for him. Like she straight up went back for him even though I think at that point Riley and Buffy were starting to have some like chemistry and things for each other but Riley but not Riley but Buffy would have thrown all of that away just to be with Angel again like she was so in love with Angel still at that point just wrapped up with him that this whole Riley relationship kind of came at the wrong time for her like she never really gotten over Angel I don't think so Riley is absolutely the rebound guy because even though Riley wasn't treating Buffy like that, like for Riley, this was so serious. This was so real. For Buffy, it was still just kind of like healing from what happened with Angel and her not actually letting Riley in completely. Like she never really accepted him as completely part of her life. Like how even what she was saying to Joyce at the beginning where she said that like, oh, I gave B Riley the day off. Like he doesn't have to be with me. and blah 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 but then of course when he wants sex or when we want to have fun he'll come right over so yeah she definitely took him for granted and I do think it was like very comfortable for her to be in this relationship like kind of like no drama Riley just sort of let her do whatever she wanted and he would always be there like I do think Riley kind of pushed his own feelings aside and his own stuff just so he could be with Buffy and support her and do whatever she needed. I do think Riley kind of disappeared in this relationship as well, which is why I don't know if they could work this out. Like maybe if they like were both very honest with their feelings, with everything they've been going through and everything they expect out of the relationship. Like if they sat down, had that huge conversation and in the end they both agreed to do the best they can maybe they could work through it like if they truly really love each other then they could have you know done that but without that I, I don't think this relationship would have worked not in the long run anyway but yeah I do think by the end Riley was also like a little self-sabotaging with like the whole vampire biting him thing like the whole bringing up the Dracula thing is so insane to me because that man was compelling Buffy and I think I saw some people, you know, say that like, oh, even afterwards, she didn't tell Riley that she got bitten. But then also, you know, like Xander was still like fully under his spell, even during the day when Dracula wasn't there. So why wouldn't that be kind of the case for Buffy as well? Like he, you know, came in, compared her or was so mysterious, had this like pull from Buffy or towards Buffy. It kind of makes sense that even after she was bitten, she would still have this compulsion that had going on with Dracula. Like we even saw, you know, her at the end put down her stake for a little bit and even bite Dracula. Like there was a lot of things going on there which were just Dracula's powers instead of, I don't know, the failings of Buffy or like letting a dangerous guy bite her again or whatever Riley was thinking. And also the whole angel comparison is also just so weird to me because First of all, I'm pretty sure Buffy kind of sort of fell for Angel while she thought he was human, right? Like she was already, you know, kissing him and was like very into him right at the point when she found out that he's a vampire. So it was definitely not the fact that he's a vampire that made Angel so compelling to her. Like she was just very much so into the guy and then he turned, it, turned out to be, you know, a vampire. So I don't know. It's just like kind of annoying me where he was like, oh, I wanted to know how you feel. And it's like, did you really? Because Buffy wasn't ever that into the biting thing. Like that wasn't what was drawing her towards these other guys, which I get that from Riley's perspective. He wouldn't know because he didn't see the relationships, not like we've seen it and like how Buffy lived it. But if he had just talked to Buffy about it, like talked to Buffy about his insecurities, 
maybe something could have happened like Buffy could have reassured him or just told him what was going on I don't know I think it's just like a whole messy situation but honestly I think Riley's decline for me started at the end of episode 3 where he told Xander that like oh she doesn't love me and then was still just with Buffy regardless of that like regardless of not feeling loved by her and also just not talking to her about it like Harry just lived like that Harry just like yeah I'm so in love with this girl like she's so amazing she doesn't actually love me but that's fine I'm happy to live like this like Riley my man open your mouth and talk to her or just break up with her if you don't feel love like oh, this man I just honestly this kind of a conflict that comes from like miscommunication or not communicating enough kind of is annoying to me like I don't really like that trope miscommunication is only like a fun trope if you do it for comedy but if you do it for serious topics it's just like I don't know like does this even happen in real life like I mean it must but I mean I'm not that kind of person like I just you know tell you how I feel and I don't hold back or play games with my feelings like I'm not like oh if I like someone I'm not gonna text them back for three days because that's so desperate like no I'll tell them I like them and if it's too strong or too much or they don't feel the same way you know like who wants to live in this goddamn limbo of like oh do they like me do they not like me just like fucking tell me it's all good if you don't like let's not waste time by you know one party liking the other more or vice versa you know I don't know like this kind of a trope is just so not for me so that's why I was like kind of annoyed with this whole situation and with Riley it just felt like he kept getting worse and worse for me but also again I understand his point of view and his side like I get it I just can't support it and I don't like it and I also acknowledge that Buffy wasn't the best girlfriend either. She took Riley for granted. She wasn't showing him how much she loves him. So yeah, I get it. Both parties are, you know, involved in this one way or another. So yeah, I'm curious to see if it's actually over or maybe we're going to have Riley come back because maybe he has heard Buffy but just couldn't say no to the pilot like he couldn't you know land again so maybe he's gonna do this one mission and then come back for Buffy I don't know like but I guess it could also just be the end for Riley which again I'm not that upset about like I'm kind of happy for it but also extremely sad for Buffy because clearly she did love the guy and she was going to try and get him to stay but she missed him so now she's just depressed again like first her mom now Riley honestly give the girl a break let her be happy I'll, I told you this multiple times I still watch the show even if she's happy like I'm not coming back here every single week hoping that oh is this the time she gets to be happy and then just be disappointed no even if she's happy I'm still gonna be like oh I wonder what this happy girl is gonna do this episode you know it's just like please let her be happy just once just once but yeah with the relationships I love that Xander went and talked to Anya and like told her how he feels it did feel like Anya was feeling a little neglected or overlooked this episode where like everything she was saying seemed to be the wrong thing like people would make fun of her or were just not accepting of what she was saying is like good so yeah I liked that at the end Xander was like hey you have nothing to worry about like I absolutely love you I'm in love with you and I want to be with you forever and ever and ever and I love that they're so cute so I'm glad that they worked that out I'm glad that Anya hopefully now feels a little bit more accepted or at least accepted by Xander because even at the beginning Xander was kind of taking Dawn's side which is of course fair because Dawn is the one who went through something super traumatic but I think to Anya it felt more like that whatever she was saying was stupid and then she was being ignored and like her ideas were wrong so I'm glad that you know Xander at the end confirmed that it's not the case and that she's very much so loved also I am so extremely happy about Joyce guys I didn't think she was gonna be fine I thought she was gonna be dead I can't believe she's alive and she was making jokes and they got all of the tumor and they didn't kill her at the end like honestly I still was worried that that could be a thing because I have definitely seen shows where like a character goes to hospital they're like oh okay they're fine now and at the very end they just like randomly die so I'm glad that didn't happen here I don't think they would do it in the next episode anymore like I think if it was gonna be that kind of a plot line they would have done it this time around so Joyce is alive Joyce is alive we're so happy about it I was so fucking nervous like genuinely I thought I was gonna have to let her go this episode but she's and I'm so happy and I cannot wait to see her back at home with Buffy and Dawn and oh 
Oh, oh, we finally get to then see Joyce and Don interact. Oh, I'm so excited about that because we haven't had that yet. Like, we haven't had them interact now that Joyce knows that Don isn't actually her daughter, even though she feels like she is. So, oh, I'm curious to see if there's going to be any sort of different interactions between them or if maybe Joyce and Buffy will discuss whether they should tell Don the truth or not. I am so excited. I'm so excited that Joyce is here for all of this. God, I really thought she was going to die. Oh, how is, how is she alive? Like, genuinely, I thought she was going to die. That speech or, like, that talk Joyce and Buffy had in the previous episode and then Joyce being wheeled off with, like, the entire cast of Buffy standing there. How was that not the end for her? I don't know, but I'm so happy. I'm so happy. She's fine. Oh, honestly, I would have been so fucking upset. So... The shirt work, the makeup work, we're good to fucking go. This is how you manifest, guys. Okay, next up, let me win the lottery. I'm winning the lottery. I can see all the money falling on me. <laughs> so yeah, this was an interesting episode. I like that Joyce is alive. I was kind of whatever feeling about the whole Buffy Riley situation. But then, oh my God, I forgot to talk about Spike. The little mischievous guy, he was just such a meddler this episode, but I loved it. I mean, it's also good that Buffy found out the truth, but it's just kind of crazy that it was from Spike. So I wonder if maybe that's going to sour Buffy's and Spike relationship. Not that they have much of a relationship, but I think in a lot of cases, the guy or like the person who tells you that like maybe your partner is cheating on you or something like that. Like if we apply it to the real world, the person you tell that, hey, your partner is cheating usually just ends up hating you as well, even though it's better for them to know, but they still just kind of hate the messenger. So I wonder if Buffy's going to maybe feel a little bit like that about Spike at some point. That she's going to be annoyed at him. That he told her the truth. Or maybe she'll be grateful. I, I don't know. But I'm excited to see their interactions in the future. Especially now that Spike has a shot. Although I do love that Spike was self-aware enough. Where he was like, yeah, I don't think I have a shot with her. But it doesn't, you know, matter. Because I still love her. Like, I still feel the same way about her. Even though she's never going to love me back. And it was kind of nice. Or, like, interesting. The whole conversation between Spike and Riley. Where they both so in love with this girl and even though Riley gets to have her he still doesn't actually have her and Spike can never have her but would want to have her and they were just kind of in the same boat so yeah that was a fun conversation and fun scene and kind of interesting to see that they can commiserate in something together because Riley and Spike are just like you know not mesh at all like Riley has always been just threatening to kill Spike and all of that so it was kind of fun to see them bond over their shared love for Buffy. I can't believe Spike told Riley that he's in love with Buffy though that was so unexpected because I I would be worried that Riley would go to Buffy and be like hey Spike is in love with you by the way but yeah now the field is open for Spike to swoop in woo Buffy off her feet romance her and end up together. I, I, yeah, definitely can see that coming. I mean, Spike's idea of romance is like kidnapping you and torturing you until you love him again. So yeah, I don't think that's gonna work on Buffy, but honestly, we don't know. Maybe Buffy's into that. So yeah, thank you guys so much for watching and a huge, huge shout out goes out to all my Patreons for supporting me. Thank you guys so much. You guys are the best. I appreciate every single one of you. And if you guys enjoyed this video, make sure to give it a like, leave a comment down below and subscribe to my channel. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.